Macau faces struggles. How nice. But anyway, let's let's read this. It says guest wait in line taxes at MGM Grand Valley area on the Las Vegas Strip, blah blah blah. And Macau MGM Resorts International recorded a net loss of $1.47 billion in the fourth quarter of 2015. <laughs> All right, man. I'm only laughing because us natives, man, the final numbers are not even in for 2015. So I'll tell you the numbers for 2014. Uh, Singapore did about uh, $6.5 billion. Las Vegas did 9.6 billion. Uh, Native Americans did 28.6 billion, and Macau did 45.2. Now, what I was reading is this: is that let's see if we can find it. Uh, I'm getting there. Let's see, Macau. They recorded a $1.47 billion. You know, in the fourth quarter. A loss, man. This is a publicly traded company. In 2007, MGM International was trading at $92 per share. Now they're trading right around $19 to $21. Now get this part. Chinese gaming has fallen for 20 straight months. <laughs> See, guys like Steve Wynn, Sheldon Adelson. All right, first, Sheldon Adelson is the chairman for a publicly traded company called the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. They own the Venetian and the Palazzo in a nutshell. Jewish guy. He's got casinos uh, in Pennsylvania. They got some oil up there, the Marcellus and Utica Shale. Um... Whenever the Seminoles were actually down in Florida, they were working on their interstate compact. Uh, crazy thing was is that they had two giant companies looking at uh, South Beach properties. They had a Malaysian company, and I forget I, I forget the company's name right off. Genting Group. Genting Group actually bought uh, some loss or some Miami Miami real estate. And also Sheldon Adelson, they were looking to set up. Now, the thing was, honestly, and I wasn't going to say this until they got the interstate compact, but um, the Seminole Tribe of Florida had the state of Florida by the balls. And I say that because uh, the Seminoles really, um, the state of Florida has dog track, like greyhound racing and stuff. So, they weren't supposed to have any machines in there. In their interstate compact before this last year, Seminole Tribe of Florida had an exclusive deal where they were the only ones who were supposed to have like gaming, so on and so forth. So basically what happened was, is that they, they screwed up the agreement and what happened was is that whenever they got ready to negotiate the new, the new uh, interstate compact, the Seminole Tribe of Florida had that as a bargaining chip. They're like, yeah, we dare you to give that contract to Genting Group or Sheldon Adelson. We will sue your ass, though. I like it because, you know, they're able to get exclusivity on Blackjack, Pie Gal, and, you know, they actually added uh, craps. And not only that, though, like their tribal council actually has a, uh, has two Gulf Streams, though. Anything else... They, they get the Gulf Streams because they basically go get Chinese gamers and they bring them back or they get, you know, international gamers or, you know, they fly to get you or, you know, whatever, though. But what they're doing is they go after whales. So, so when it comes to Tampa Bay casinos or they go to, you know, Hollywood casinos, the um, really neat part is they can't grow. I don't think they can do any more growth as far as their casinos over, like, the next uh, almost, like, seven years. But one of the neat parts is is that uh, they're adding on their hotels, so that would be pretty neat, though. One of the things that I, I feel that that um, that Vegas actually does have a little, just a tiny bit edge over uh, native native casinos is that their convention market. You know, 
I think that, you know, if Native Americans really want to keep building and they want to build a business off the casino, because here's the truth. Casinos really aren't a business. What it is is like like having a, a big giant river full of fish and setting up a net. It promotes gambling. It promotes like, you know, like a, not, a, not a healthy lifestyle. So, you know, that, that's kind of a bone that the government kind of gives us. So if we can spend any businesses off that, it would be super neat. Um, anyhow, I would say this, though. If you can get like a, uh, a telemarketing room or, or, or whatever, though, get some people in there to be able to lock down, um, you know, their, lock down your, uh, you know, these giant corporations worldwide, though. The other neat part is, is that Vegas has is nightclubs. I'm not a big into nightclubs, but... Um, they do have like some really big nightclubs. I've dated, some, dated a girl, her family like, you know, revolutionized nightclubs worldwide though. Um, I think uh, they had about a $110 million nightclub and it does about a million and a half dollars in alcohol sales a night. Crazy, that's where all those rap things come from where it's talking about popping bottles and all this bullshit because they overpriced it, way overpriced the alcohol. Anyhow. But the restaurants, I would really like to see Native Americans like bring their restaurant game to new heights. I would say this, in Vegas, you have somebody that will watch the Iron Chef or the Food Network, the Cooking Network, whatever it may be. Any contest and anybody that actually has marketability, they take from Food Network and they're able to put them in a casino and they're able to raise like, you know, 30, 40 million dollars and create a menu. Now the menu always has to be, um, what is it? Um, somebody told me that it has to be about 70 to 80% alcohol because you cannot eat more food and get more hungry, but you can drink more alcohol and want more alcohol. So, you know, I'd really like to see, you know, marketability. And I, man, I'm always trying to help like business development in Indian country. I don't care if it's nonprofit, clothing companies, oil companies, uh, media, uh, sports guys, whatever it may be. Though um, business development is is really you know I give suggestions. Though I mean I've been around for 30 years and you know in the fight game and uh, got a finance degree, the minor in marketing, man. Like been to college, like taking ass whippings though, man. Understand distribution, I understand fashion, I understand, you know, I just try to help wherever I can. But anyway, um, man, be pretty neat though. Anyway, last thing I want to lead on is, uh, you know, I really wish a lot of these presidents would get their shit together and actually talk about our issues and our, our you know, our stuff. When the final numbers come in for 2015, I think you're probably going to see right north of 45 billion dollars in gaming for Native Americans. I know we're the international leaders, but um, man, you got casinos. Go, You have the Mohegan Sun getting ready to put up a five billion dollar casino in South Korea to hijack the Macau market because they were last year's gamer, uh, international leaders. So anyhow, pretty, pretty neat though, man. I'd really like to see things take off for us. Anyway, you guys stay cool out there. Later.